All right, what we're working on here today is a county line 28 ton log splitter. Uh, model number there is a 2152374. And it's going to be running a Honda GC190 engine. Uh, customer complaint is it is a no start. So, first thing we're going to do is check our fuel here. Look in there, we got fuel up top of the filler neck doesn't smell bad at all so um, next we're gonna hook up our spark tester that way we can during our first cranks here we can make sure we got spark and there we are we do have spark going to the plug zoom in a little more not quite captured there we are there we go looks like nice strong spark going down to the plug so let's yank that plug out and see what we got going on here so we got some carbon build up uh, plugs not especially wet doesn't look terrible if only the camera would come into focus here but it's heavily sooted over. So we're going to double check the gap on it real quick. Should be right about 30 thousandths. Yep, pretty much. Pretty much there. And that's, uh, that's actually within spec for this engine in this configuration. So we got a new plug here already. I'm going to regap that. And that is a BPR 6ES. The R stands for a resistor style plug. In this particular Honda, you do need a resistor style plug, or I've run into problems where they just kick back and really don't run all that great. Now, some Hondas, if they have the long plastic spark plug boot or a cap on it, that actually has a resistor built in, so you won't need a resistor plug for that one. Alright, and we're just going to tighten up the uh, top screw terminal on that, make sure that doesn't work its way loose while it's running, causing mini arcing. Alright, stick our boot back on. We got our ignition switch in the on position, pull the choke out, and there we go, fire right off, shoot some soot and all out of there, got wood shavings and everything bouncing around. And now we are going to check overall splitter operation. So we're going to run this through, cycle everything, make sure it's okay. We don't want to make sure this engine isn't going to bog down on us or anything else while, while we're running it. Now really I should be putting a log in here, but for all intents and purposes it was just a fouled spark plug, so I'm pretty confident about it. Got good movement, although these are god awful slow compared to a flywheel style log splitter. And here we're just going to lube everything down with some spray lube. That helps all the wood chips kick out from between the rails there instead of getting jammed in. Makes everything run a little smoother. I lube my log splitters up after I'm done using them every time. Just helps everything push through and then the uh, paint surfaces that are exposed and get worn down helps keep them from rusting out. Alrighty. And that's that. Alrighty. 
right, so real quick here, just a breakdown of what this is. This is an old 1950s, I believe, Champion spark plug tester. So what we got here is we have our old failed plug out of the splitter. This is a brand new plug for comparison purposes. And how this works is we have air pressure coming up through here into there. That's our pressure regulator right off to the right here. And that regulates pressure coming into these two tubes here. So, once we do that, first we're going to have our ignition lead hooked up to the plug here. And we're going to fire it at zero PSI to simulate how a plug fires outside of the engine at atmospheric pressure, which will actually be substantially different than when it fires with 110 PSI coming in. God, that is hideous. So, once we, uh, once we fire both of these at zero PSI, we're going to crank it up in our good range here. To about 100 psi, and then we're going to watch what happens with these plugs again. All right, so here we go. Get everything adjusted, and we got our lead hooked up to our bad plug out of the splitter. There's our new one, and we're going to hit our little red button on the side and watch it spark. See how we have a real weak light-colored spark there that's hopping all over. I mean, you can actually see multiple sparks occurring there. Alright, let's get focus back on the new plug and take a look down at this new plug at the nice strong blue spark we got going there. Nice strong blue spark. So now we're going to crank our pressure up to simulate firing in a running engine. So right about 100, 105, somewhere in there. And that's going to be our good setting for a good plug and see that we still got good spark there nice strong blue spark in one spot and here you're gonna see something pretty cool and we caught fire in there so that's actually the same flame that would be occurring in that cylinder that real weak spark and actually an open flame which with an engine trying to run at any kind of speed and the fuel air charge coming in it's just, it's not going to work. It's going to blow that flame right out and you're going to have nothing but issues. So that's why, just because a plug seems like it fires under regular atmospheric compression, does not mean it's going to fire properly under engine compression. And here we're just doing a test at another pressure, same thing. Spark jumping all over the place, real weak spark. And we will throw one more in here. Here's another plug. This is a fuel fouled plug out of a John Deere X585 we were working on. So there's a uh, there's another good plug comparing them. Crank it open again. Keeping a lower pressure for this engine. And there we go. Pretty decent spark. Not quite as blue as you'd like to see, but I mean, we'll, we'll deal with that. And there you go. Real weak. Barely doing anything. Bouncing all over. So that's a fuel fa fuel fouled spark plug. So there we are. Thought that was something you guys might like. Alright, so basically what we saw there was just a real quick and simple uh, no start on a log splitter that ended up being due to a faulty spark plug. And then uh, we threw a couple extra spark plug tests in there afterwards just to show the difference between spark plug firing outside of a cylinder or spark plug firing in a cylinder. The differences in that due to the compression pressure in there, uh, obviously we couldn't factor fuel in into it but it gives you a pretty good idea 
which will also show just because a plug will sit there and fire outside of the cylinder the old stick the plug on top of the engine and crank it over a couple times see if you have a spark not always accurate I mean in this case it would have been very misleading we would have gone another direction for it because that plug would arc pretty decent outside of the cylinder but as soon as you put it up to high pressure it actually turned into a all-out flame which as I said before would just be put out immediately by a uh, heavy 14.7 to 1 fuel air ratio so uh, hope you guys enjoyed that we got more videos coming and have a good one we also now have a new website scienceofdiagnostics.com um, there will be blog posts there explaining the theory and diagnostic procedures and some repair information on everything we cover so it'll be a partner to this YouTube channel. Uh, the videos will obviously continue to come. Videos are a lot easier to show a lot of stuff with, but then some of the more in-depth stuff will all be done on the website. So it'll be a, uh, you know, mutual reference to each other. Um, hopefully people enjoy the website. Like I said, it's just up now. Um, still some bugs to work out and some content to get out there and as we do more posts and more videos obviously everything will get more polished and just better off all together so uh, look forward to some constructive criticism and hopefully we can make something out of this alright that's it thank you